Well, national engineering leaders are calling for Australia to join the European Space Agency. Joining me now is Dr Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist with the Australian National University. Thanks for your time. I was a bit intrigued by this, that we can do it, but also do we have to pick between Europe or the US? I thought NASA was still a pretty big deal. Yeah, so I think the thing is, yeah, NASA is still a big deal and, you know, we're still going to work with them and we still want to work with them. Um, there's a lot of benefits of formally joining ESA. I, so I think the difference is we can never really formally be part of NASA, right? So, yeah, we're going to work on projects and collaborate. You know, ESA is designed so that, like in a lot of European infrastructure, every country has their own program, but they work under a larger umbrella for joint projects. Now, to some degree, this is actually how NASA works. You have a bunch of different centers that all do their own thing, but they kind of work under this large NASA umbrella. So in Europe, the way they do that is every country is doing this, working under a European umbrella. And so there's this push that, you know, it probably could be a huge benefit for us to join ESA, allowing to be, you know, to allow to be directly able to contribute to new projects and also drive our own with support from other nation states without having to go through, you know, agreements and treaties and signings all the time. It's just part of business. All right. Well, we'll see how that plays out. I like, I like how you do the sort of politics in the space these days. Now, Saturn's moon or one of them, it's got a lot of moons. Um, more evidence of potential life in the oceans underneath. Now, we knew there was water, obviously, and it was frozen. But what this is to do with vapour, warmth there as well. Yeah, it, it is, it's, it's vapour coming out of in these, these jets underneath, from underneath this kind of frozen terrain. And so that kind of implied there was liquid water underneath this, this icy crust. But what they have found looking at old data from the Cassini probe, which went around Saturn uh, of the moon Enceladus, is that there was organic compounds, so stuff that kind of makes up things like life, but a, a, a number of things, and it changed with time, right? So usually when you have a moon or a planet and stuff is released, it's fairly constant. You don't get a change in terms of volume uh, and properties and molecular structure because, you know, if hydrogen or water is emitted from a planet or a moon, it stays as hydrogen or helium or something. In this case, you have something that has changed during the process, and living things obviously ch change stuff. So, you know, we breathe in oxygen, produce carbon dioxide, plants do the reverse. So you have some sort of process changing molecules from underneath the ocean in these jets to out in space. And that obviously gets people excited because it's kind of this yet another pile of evidence that there may be something going on under the oceans of Enceladus, this moon of Saturn, and you know, further calls to say, look, let's have a dedicated mission to go and check out this moon. And what, a, a, a manned mission or just a craft? Because I'm assuming it would take a bit too much time to get there and back, right? Yeah, exactly. It would take a bit of time to get there. I mean, you're talking about seven years tops, or you know, it, it's not going to be fast. So That'd you're talking commitment. about some sort of robotic mission, yeah, to to potentially get okay. underneath the crust as well. The other thing that blew me away reading this is it's described as this spacecraft's 20-year mission. So does that mean while it's going around that there's, there's a team or maybe someone's been on it the whole time for 20 years just looking at the data that it comes in each day, analysing it? Like that, that's, that's a long time to be focusing on something. But I guess this is the, this is the grunt work before the headlines, <laughs> isn't it? It is, right. And and as you said, you know, when you build these missions, you kind of build them for one or two goals. And then if you get, you know, longer operation out of it because it lasts longer and so it keeps working, that's bonus. And then you kind of want to keep pouring over the data. So, yeah, so there are teams. Now, some of them have been renewed because people have, have retired, but there has been this kind of yeah. continuity of people studying the data still coming out of the Cassini probe. Um, you know, it, its mission did right. end a few years ago, finally, but a dedicated team just to finding uh, the secrets and all of the data it's taken for those two decades. It's a lot of years in a white coat. Brad Tucker, thank you.